Steve, I noticed you've been using the microwave a lot lately. I thought most chefs felt that microwave cookery was inferior. Not at all, Carl. A microwave would be a welcome addition to any kitchen arsenal. I'm a modern chef and must keep up the times. Well, that certainly doesn't apply to your chef's coat because I tried you to get to change to blue and you're definitely stuck in the past because you only wanted white. Carl, some things are sacred and the purity of white suits me. Watson, sometimes you just walk right into them, but this time I'm going to give you a break. I'm saying nothing. Yes, Mr. Watson, you are indeed a modern chef. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. So, Steve, tell us what you really think of microwave ovens. Carl, I truly stand by them. I've got one at home. I've had it for 22 years. I cook in it. I reheat in it. And as you can tell, I clarify a lot of butter in it as well. Yes, you do. Uh, I like them for vegetables. Mm. You put fresh vegetables in. You don't have to put a lot of water in. And they cook to perfection. perfection yeah. uh, I think the reason a lot of people don't like microwaves is because they're intimidated by them. They use them just to reheat coffee and that sort Correct, of thing. Yeah, but yeah. you can, in fact, cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You, you don't. You can. You can just get by with this machine only. Exactly. And I know people that actually <laughs> do that. The best thing to do, I think, is to go out and get a good a cookbook, a microwave go cookery cookbook, yep, to yep. Go, and a lot of them come with their own cookbooks. Mm -hmm. uh, one other bit of advice I would give is to make sure you don't uh, overcook. Uh, you can always, uh, you know, cook a little bit more if you undercook something, but if you put, put it on for too many minutes, you're going to ruin the food and, exactly. and you won't be able to uh, correct it. Anyway, we're not cooking with a microwave oven today. We're actually cooking with a convention oven, or convection oven, conventional oven and a cooktop. Uh, we've got Terry Andrews with us and you're cooking. I'm going to be making an Irish cottage pie. Mm. And we also have Chef Mike Barsky from Bacalao with us who's going to do a fantastic uh, appetizer of chanterelle mushrooms. So stay tuned. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. Well, Tada Entertainment is renowned for its Broadway-style productions of uh, musical theater. They've done Cabaret, Cats, Rocky Horror Show, and many more. And Terry Andrews, the founder of Tada, is also a producer and director of the Divas shows. Our Divas do Broadway, our Divas do Christmas, along with uh, Sheila Guy Murphy, and it's great to have you on the show. Thanks, Carol. Yes. I'm really happy Absolutely to be here. Absolutely lovely to have you here. So, Steve, what's on the menu? Well, what I'm going to be making today, Terry, is an Irish shepherd's pie. And what we've started to do now, I've already started to ground some beef off, and I'm just going to put a little bit of beef stock in there. We'll get that going. We'll turn the temperature up, if you wish, to about eight there, to this one here. This one? Yeah. And to that I'm going to be chopping some onions, we'll be adding that to it. But normally we would add Guinness to it, but today I found this perfect stout here in the city. And, uh, oh, yellow belly. Be yellow belly. So St. John's Stout, SJS. Yep. Now, do you like this stout at all? I absolutely love that stout, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. Yes, perfect. It's, perfect. Uh, it's a quality product made right here. So I'll be adding some carrots, some onions, a bit of garlic, some peas, and uh, some spices as well, some herbs. But Carla, we're also going to be topping that with some mashed potato and oh. some cheese. Oh, so uh, whenever you want, you can add that to the bowl and okay. uh, we'll start mashing that up. So. Nicely peeled, okay. by the so way. So I should yeah. start stirring this? Stirring, Terry, who Absolutely. does the cooking in your house? So your husband, Wayne, or yourself? To be honest, Wayne does far more than I do. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's far better cook. Does he have a specialty? Uh, I don't know that he has a special. You know what? He really, cook. he really likes to barbecue. Oh, okay. so we barbecue <laughs> yeah. all year, and he barbecues lots of different things. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he's not restricted to steak. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Steve, are we putting uh, spyglass butter in this? Oh, yeah, no, actually, we're just going to use Central Dairy's cream and some oh. farmer's old cheddar cheese. Okay, yes. And I'm sure you've got a few secret ingredients that you're putting in there actually, as well. Actually, I do have one here. I have white pepper. A lot of oh. people put black pepper in, but I like to put white pepper. 
and it won't show the specs in there. That's right, it doesn't show the specs. So a little white pepper. What about some salt? Do you want me to put some Absolutely. salt in? Absolutely. We have some Mediterranean salt there. I find that oh, a little bit yes. sweeter, actually. Yes. It's not so uh, pungent. Fleur, fleur de sel. And why, a bit um, of that in there. why do you use old cheddar versus a medium, for instance? Yeah. Yeah. Purely because of the flavor. It's a lot sharper. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. a lot sharper. That's so. very sweet. And we're putting the cheddar in as well, right? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Don't be shy Ooh, with that that's cheddar. Nice. No, I certainly will I'm not. I'm going to add some herbs in there. I've got some oregano, some marjoram. Um, a little bit of thyme as well in there, so then we'll just add that slowly around. It's perfect. Terry, you and uh, Sheila aren't doing the Divas show this year. You're going no, to do it next not. year. Why is that? Well, we've, we've been doing it now for six years. Mm -hmm. We've done Divas Do Christmas, Divas Do oh, Broadway, yeah. Divas yeah. Do Christmas on Broadway. And we decided that um, we wanted to change it up. So we're changing it completely, and the next one will be mm -hmm. Divas Do Disney. Oh, wow! What yeah. a great idea! Yeah, and... Yeah. You'll uh, have a lot of things to play around with there. Ooh, there's there's a, such a great repertoire oh now of Disney, yeah, uh, Disney all, music. All the Disney, yeah. all the Disney shows and the Disney movies and the stage shows. Yeah. So um, Bill Brennan does a lot of our arrangements. Yeah. You know, he'll do orchestral arrangements and choral arrangements mm -hmm. and vocal arrangements. So when you get a show that has 40 songs in it, mm -hmm. you need to take the time to write wow. it. Wow. That's now so we'll just good. Add a little to bit of our stout. Oh, that's nice. Mmm. <laughs> the garlic and the stout. Oh. That's pretty decadent. I yes. like that. Yeah, so uh, the other thing was lots of people came in and uh, said, well, we'd really like to bring s our children. Mmm. You know, yeah. so. So this will be a nice family show. Yeah, we'll be able to show. mix it up and yeah. have stuff for the adults and for the kids. You know, Terry. A uh, touch of red wine as well. One thing that may, must make nice. you feel, you and Sheila feel really good, I, and I know and you know a lot of people who've actually been to Broadway and seen Broadway shows, so many people come out of your shows and say, you know, that was as good as anything I saw on Broadway. Uh, I, get, I get a lot of yeah. that. I get a lot of that in, in the Tada shows and things yep. too. I, I think a lot of it is, um, uh, we have tremendous talent here. There's no oh, doubt about yes. it. So yeah. we we can do as well as anywhere, mm -hmm. and um, we can get you know we have nice theaters, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, because of the community, and I guess it's a, a small community, we can we can stage things bigger. Mm -hmm. You know we don't yeah. uh, we don't have the financial restrictions, uh, and we have to get financial backing, but. Uh, yeah. um, you know, you don't mm -hmm. have a lot of union stuff and, That's right. and things yeah. like that to deal with, so we can be far more creative. And this fall, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, yeah. How did you come up with the idea for that? And, and it's kind of an innovative show, too. Well, you know, it's, um, it's funny because it's a show that I've wanted to do for a long time, and I'm partnering on it with AOR Presents, John Rao, mm -hmm. who does some fabulous, fabulous things with animations, yep. and, and we put animations behind Disney, or uh, behind the Divas shows, mm -hmm. and Acroatics, and when we all got talking about it and said, well, why don't we all do it, and then the movie came out at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So what we're doing is um, going a little outside my comfort zone, my comfort zone is big, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm well within that. Oh yes, yeah. Um, but I usually work on the musical theater things yeah. and singing. Yeah. We've cast dancers and gymnasts and aerialists and yeah. acrobats yeah. and actors in this, and we're training them over the summer to go up in the air. Yeah. So we're going to do Alice in the Air. It sounds mm. fabulously visual. <laughs> yeah. Can you pass the potatoes over, Carl, please? It will be, yeah, it will be. And I mean, by go. the time you put you silks much. and animations and yeah. the costumes yeah. and, and, and the levels that you can have, you know, you have people mm -hmm. up here and people there. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's something that hasn't been done around here, so, yeah. you know, it's no sense doing it if you're not having yeah. fun, and, and fun is and, new. And uh, Holy Heart, is that uh, your, your yeah. venue yeah. for most of your work? No, um, we did Divas last year in Mile One. Or the oh, year before last, right, sorry, yeah, in Mile yeah, One. Sure that worked did, yeah. really well. We yep. do a lot of stuff at the Arts and Culture Center. Mm -hmm. But Holy Heart, um, it, it's, a, it's, it's a theater that we want to support. Sure. And Sheila and I particularly, because yep. we're Holy Heart girls. Right. Yeah. Uh, plus, there's stuff there. We can actually put silks up through, come down through the ceiling, mm -hmm. and work over the pit. And there's, mm. uh, you know, it has its restrictions, and it also has some unique mm -hmm. features that That's allow right. us to do yeah. things differently. Well, I must say the uh, the Divas show looked uh, fabulous nice. there last year. So what we've done there, Terry, we've added uh, the onions, the garlic, the, our herbs, uh, our carrots, and uh, our ground beef. Uh, what we're we going to do, and of course we 
Cafe I Stout and our, our red wine. I also put a little bit of Worcester sauce in there as oh, well. Oh, that was so. good. You can smell that coming oh, up here really now. Oh, it's really coming through. So what we can do now, we'll pop that back into the... No, into don't a... take it from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, oh, please, oh, no, it's oh, too please. Good. Okay. Okay, so we'll take that, we'll pop it into Wayne, our... if you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put that into our... Yeah, pan. we'll have to send the recipe to Wayne for this one. Oh, yeah, be no. uh, he'll be sitting by the TV writing it down, believe yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, so we'll just lay that in like so. And then I've just put the potato, I'll just turn that off, mm -hmm. into a piping bag. And which Pipe Carl, it on top. Uh, Carl graciously did. I, I like to do a little bit of a design on there rather than just mm -hmm. spreading it on there, so we just... Well, that's a nice idea. I mean, that's something Pipe I don't think to do at home is to make it look that pretty. And it's but it's not simple, hard, actually, is yeah. it? And, it, and it's comfort food as well. I oh mean, it's, God, it's a yes. nice fall mm. dish. This could be made up ahead of time, and then you just pop it into the oven, of course, like so. It just takes a couple of minutes, you see. So, Steve, is this your comfort food? It is actually. Yeah. I, I love it. You know, and, and my kids love it. My family loves it, and it's something they can make up the day beforehand or whatever. And when you come home from work, half an hour in the oven, and away you go. So is there any um, benefit in doing it in the larger dish versus in smaller dishes? Wow, well we have a secret to that, you see. We have a secret and that's the uh, wonder of TV, you see. So uh, this will be uh, left like this and I'll pop it into the oven for, I'd say, <laughs> 45 minutes to half an hour. And, uh, or 45 minutes to an hour. And to the wonders of TV, you oh, mentioned well, small just, dishes, just of course, we do have some prepared. Voila! Oh, oh my! And, uh, this is our individual ones. And uh, I, think, yeah. I think the benefit actually to doing it this way is presentation. Presentation. Oh, if you do yes. it this way for a dinner party, uh, it looks quite, you know, attractive it's and everybody nice. kind of gets the same experience. Exactly. Whereas if you serve it in the larger dish, you have to scoop out portions. So doesn't look quite oh, as good. So you'd pop the container right onto the dinner plate? Right, right onto, onto the, the dinner, dinner plate, plate yeah. and we're going to be serving yeah. this with a, a nice seasonal green salad, some toast points, some balsamic vinegar on the salad. And uh, what I like as well, if you go around the stores, these are all red ones, but you can get all different colored dishes as well. So that could be mixed matched on your table and everything else, you see, yeah, of this size portion. And, and you're uh, going to serve that with? Uh, uh, seasonal greens, balsamic vinegar, and right. toast points. Yeah. yeah, right, okay, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I'd but you uh, can only eat this if you train me to go on the trapeze, because I'd love to go on the trapeze, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> He would, too. Okay, you got a deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See the chef swinging the table. You, you, <laughs> you may regret that deal. Yeah, 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 you yeah absolutely. Anyways, Be careful uh, what you wish for, we can make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pop down to the wine cellar and see if we can come up with a wine to go with this yeah. uh, fabulous Irish shepherd's pie. I'll be so, back. Super. They usually do a good job down at the wine cellar of picking out. I know, I've been watching him. Yeah, yeah. Andrew Facey. Hello, Carl. How's things at the NLC? Very well, sir. I enjoy it very much. Good. I work for some great people there. Excellent. Now, this should be an easy one for you today. We've got uh, Irish Shepherd's mm, Pie. Sounds delicious. And nice. I know you're doing it with beef as opposed to lamb. Mm. Uh, this is a very full, rich, heavy dish. Uh, classic Irish hearty tr main course. So I've gone the red wine route. I think this would uh, dish would overpower white and rosé. And, and mystery wine. And this is a, a little special wine. bonus at the end. Something that I would personally have with th this dish. Oh, okay. Maybe ahead of one of these <laughs> two. Uh, the dish is basically meat and potatoes. So two grape varieties that go great with this are Zinfandel and Cabernet Sauvignon. Now, just tell me about Zinfandel. Zinfandel that sounds California. It is the grape that we associate with California. Uh, they say the exact same grape as Primitivo in southern Italy in Apulia. Uh, they originally, or it originally, or it originated in uh, Croatia. We're told, though. What does old vine mean, Andrew? Old vine means exactly what you think it does. The vines are older than most other vines. Sometimes 50, 60, 70 years plus. Now this will mean... So does that mean better grapes or it, it, weaker grapes? Or? Definitely stronger. You are on the right... Uh, more intense. Smaller grapes, uh, thicker skin, mm -hmm. less bunches. Uh, so this means much more intense in terms of aromas and flavors. Often quite tannic. Uh, a lot more tannic than so regular ones that, too. So does it follow then that this is more a more expensive wine? 
Not necessarily. Uh, this is just a little under $15. This is a steal. If you're going to barbecue any red meats or do, do something like you're doing today, I think this is a perfect wine for that. So how old does an old vine have to be to be classified as an old vine? There's no real world standard with that. I think different countries are using the term for different things, but usually it will be 30, 40 years plus before people want to start to brag about it, I would believe. Okay, sorry, mm -hmm. carry on. No, no, great. Uh, this is a great, and as I said, entry level option. Uh, something from Australia, from McLaren Vale. Uh, Peter Dennis is a big supporter of Newfoundland. I don't know if you've known this, but he's been back and forth here for over 15 years. Uh, he loves where he loves where we are. He loves the people. I think Newfoundland is a good supporter of Peter <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> you know what? You are correct there too. I'm sure, Carl. This is a wonderful product for $25. Uh, 06. It's a little softer than you'd expect uh, from many Cabernet Sauvignons. Something's going to go nice with the potato and with the uh, the right. meat, but. As I promised earlier, yes, oh, I can't wait. What, what I would have if I was to eat an Irish shepherd's pie this evening would have to be a stout beer. St. John's Stout. Well, of course, the St. John's that's Stout. What, well, it's in, it's in the dish. Well, yeah. you know what? This is something else that we do as sommeliers. We often try to match the, the wine and color of a wine with uh, what's in the dish with what we drink. And we will do the same with a beer today, too. I think this is going to go great with it. Yeah, and you know, uh, this is a, a very good uh, stout. And I'm a big fan of Liam McKenna, who makes this, uh, this stout. And uh, I just think it's uh, superior, and I agree with you totally. I think because this is in the dish, it's going to be a great match. So Please I'm going to go know. with this. Thank okay? you. Enjoy. See you later. Cheers. Now, I know Andrew has picked us something nice to drink from downstairs. We've got a beautiful shepherd's pie there, Irish shepherd's pie. A few seasonal greens on there with some balsamic vinegar. A nice lid there for garnish and a toast point to the side and of course from Alice in Wonderland eat me and to the table well we have a little surprise libation <laughs> to go with our Irish shepherd's pie uh, Andrew Facey suggested St. John's Stout. Mm. He said there's nothing better to go with this dish since uh, we've actually used this in the dish. He said it will make a perfect match, even better than wine. So <laughs> our wine expert has gone into beer. He's expanding. Uh, now, I want you to have a taste, Terry, and let me... Oh, we've got our little Alice in Wonderland uh -huh. signs oh, here. Nice. Yeah. Little Alice signs. Yes. So Eat me. No I problem here. Does that mean I'm going to grow a little taller? Uh, you may. <laughs> that would be a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Really good. Yeah. Oh my. Mm. Mm. It's hot. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yes, but it's very, very good. Really good. Yeah. Very, very good. And I must say, mm -hmm. the uh, the mashed potatoes are particularly good. <laughs> <coughs> Especially with the brown white pepper. It's all about you. Yeah, yeah it's all about me. <laughs> it usually is. It yeah. usually is. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, Terry, uh, just before we go, one thing that a lot of people don't know about you is that you have a, a day job, which is <laughs> actually quite interesting because uh, it allows you to do things like learn how to uh, crash in a helicopter and get turned upside mm. down underwater. <laughs> this is true. This is true. <laughs> just yeah. tell, tell us about that. Well, I, um, for about 20 years, actually, mm -hmm. I've had a management company, it's Quality Plus. Inc. Mm -hmm. and we do health, safety, quality, environmental management systems. So right now I'm on a contract to AKCS Offshore Partner and part of what I do is go offshore mm -hmm. so I spent yesterday doing the offshore training going upside down in the helicopter and banging out the window and getting out and then at the end of it I had to crawl up this net with a little help from a lot of friends there. Oh, and uh, it really made me think, you know, because I kept saying to John Rao, who's working as my co-producer on this show, oh, we could put nets in the back of Alice <laughs> and all the uh, gymnasts and the dancers could just crawl up and be little bats. And I came away from the training and went, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, uh, it allows me to support yeah. my theater habit. Well, I had, a, I had the good fortune to go out to Hibernia once, and I actually slept out there on, on the, the platform at Hibernia. What did you think of the food? The food was fabulous. That's yeah. what I was going to say. You know me and food. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the food out there, they eat well. They do they eat, eat well. well. They do eat well. It's, it's and they deserve to. Yeah, yeah. The rigs are dry. Nope, no booze, but they eat really well. Yeah. 
Anyway, uh, Terry, it's been fabulous having you on thank One you Chef, One Critic. Thank you so Friday. much. It was a real uh, honor and a pleasure. It's been a blast, and uh, I want to thank you for this and all the best to you with your productions Cheers. in the future. Uh, thank you. Cheers, Terry. Thank you very much. And uh, now coming up next on the program, we're going to be um, eating uh, mushrooms with uh, Alice and Johnny Depp. No. <laughs> 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 Actually, coming up next... Uh, Mike Barsky of Bacalao is going to be with us, and he's going to do a fabulous appetizer using chanterelle, chanterelle mushrooms. mushrooms. Yes. Mm. Oh, God. Excellent. Years ago, Mike Barsky and Andrea Maunder opened Bacalao, Nouvelle Newfoundland cuisine, uh, on Larch Road in St. John's. They have a satellite Bacalao at the Clarenville Inn. And uh, over the past couple of years, uh, this restaurant has developed a stellar reputation for fabulous Newfoundland-inspired dishes, particularly their daily salt cod offering. And with us now is Chef Mike Barsky. Welcome to the show, Thank Chef. Thank you very much. Good it's to great. have you here. It's great to be here. Mike, this looks like uh, a great uh, recipe you're going to be making for us, local chanterelle. So can, can you just t t tell us a little bit about the ingredients and what you're going to be making? Yeah, over here we got uh, some nice fresh local chanterelles that were just picked. They look beautiful. Mm -hmm. that, I love the color of chanterelle mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, can't they're, gor today. yeah yep. they're gorgeous, aren't they? Mm. So we're going to do like a little ragu and serve mm -hmm. it on toast. Oh, go right ahead. All okay. right, perfect. So I'm going to start off with some spyglass butter. Lovely. A nice hot pan there. Oh, yep. very good. Yep. Butter and chanterelles. What could be better? Yep. <laughs> Back to the chanterelles? <laughs> well, I'm just going to add a few shallots to the pan okay. here. Good. Yep. Yep. There we go. I'm going to caramelize those, I see. Yep. Very nicely. Oh All my right. Goodness, you can add some, uh, some mushrooms now. All nicely picked. And they were probably nice. picked in the season, of course. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. Very really good. It's not taking long at all, is it? No. So, how is the satellite restaurant going in Clarenville now? Oh, it's going really well. well. It's yeah. really busy. Yeah, we have a great staff there, and we're into the whole tourist season now, so okay. it's, it's excellent. Perfect. Yeah. The aroma from those chanterelles is absolutely extraordinary. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Just going to add a little bit of uh, some fresh garlic there. Mm-hmm. Very good. Yeah. Um, so the garlic is minced fairly fine, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, nice yeah, now I can add a little cognac right. in there, there I think. Go. Oh, yeah, thank goodness. A this, this is where we go. Yes. This is the showmanship here. Yeah, oh, there oh, we go. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. So we've got the cognac in there, we've got the minced garlic, we've got some shallots and butter. And yeah, a little bit of lemon juice. A little lemon, lemon juice. Yeah, a little bit of lemon. Excellent. Nice, nice and okay, and we can add a little bit of cream to it. Can I do that for you? Sure. Well, oh, perfect. perfect. Away we go. Yeah, just a perfect. Bit. It's <laughs> only dear to my heart, you see. Yes. So. Yeah, and how are we so going to be serving this, Mike? We're going to serve it on the, the garlic uh, toast there. On the plate there? Right yeah. on the plate, yeah. 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 Now, what have you actually done with the toast? Uh, you say garlic toast. Did you yeah. rub it with garlic? Just rub it with garlic and some uh, spyglass butter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, you then you toast it, toast in, it in, in, in the oven. oven. In the oven, yeah. 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 And we're going to serve that with some seasonal greens, I guess, yeah. so mm -hmm. some local greens. So. Yeah. And now I'm going to add some, uh, just some nice fresh greens from the organic farm. Perfect. All right, some lemon thyme and some fresh flat leaf mm. parsley. The aroma, yeah. just absolutely uh, magnificent. Layering on yeah. flavor, flavor after, after flavor. flavor. Yeah. yeah, yes, indeed. Yeah. And I'll just season a little bit with some, let's see, some fleur de sel. Yeah, and, and a little bit pepper. of fresh pepper. Excellent, beautiful. I can't wait to try it. this one, Carl. Yeah. Yeah. This is quite uh, simple to make too. I think yeah. I, I don't think uh, any home cook would be intimidated by this recipe. No, it's quite no, nice. indeed not. And the recipe will be available, by, uh, by the way, on our uh, One Chef, One Critic website. So shall we put the uh, croutons onto the plate then? Uh, yeah, definitely. And away we go. Nice. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. So I is this something you'd serve at the restaurant, Mike? Uh, uh, certainly we can, yeah. Yep. Now that uh, we have the mushrooms. Yeah. All right, and I'll just put it right on the plate, on mm -hmm. the toast here. Yeah, that's right. You, you really do try to be seasonal at Bacalao, mm. mm. Bacala, don't you? Yes, definitely. Very good. Carl, wow! Would you like a fork? Oh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have a fork. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna pick it up like this. All right. It never changes. Oh. Well, I'm gonna go right from here. Mm. Oh, beautiful! Try it on myself too. Mm. Oh, it's hot. Mm. 
<laughs> there you go. It's hot, hot, hot. We'll keep you on again. Mm. Thank you very much. This is so good. Mm. Beautiful. I don't know what uh, flambe uh, or fl flaming does to a, sun, uh, a dish, but it certainly adds a je ne sais quoi. There's something <laughs> about it. Just adds a little yeah. bit of extra something. Yeah. Anyway. This was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, You're Mike, welcome. for being on the yeah. program. My anyway. pleasure. Thank yeah. you for having me. And that's it for this edition of One Chef, One Critic. <laughs> yes, Mr. Watson, you are indeed a modern chef. Now, uh, now, goodbye. <laughs>